I got disowned and shunned from my family and community for sending my son in jail. I am from Indian Bengali background. We live in abroad. I have a son who got married a year ago. That day when I called the police, I saw his wife had bruises, black eye, busted lip. It doesn't take a genius to know what happened to her. I asked her and my son whose head was low in guilt. I asked him, son, do you do this? He replied he did. He did it because she served him cold coffee when he wanted it hot. My daughter-in-law told me she did bring him hot coffee but it got cold while he was talking on the phone. My son said sorry and to never do it again. It wasn't enough. I called the cops on him. He got angry and attacked one of the officers. And now he is in jail. This news got spread in my community like wildfire and people have been calling me a bad mom. Some told me I am ruining my son's future for something so small. My son will suffer in future because of these allegations. Some told me this is his private matter even as a mother-in-law I shouldn't have interfered. Some told me I should support my son regardless of what he did. After all sons are the star in a mother's eyes. I got a lot of backlash for supporting my daughter-in-law. I have been called names by everyone. They think I am making a big issue out of a small argument. Indian people see DV as taboo. So they do not want to talk about it in the open. My husband told me what I did was wrong. People will shun our family. That's what happened. None of my friends talked to me. Even family members kicked me out of the group chat. My family member thinks I should have just given him a warning instead of calling the police. They all think my daughter-in-law must have done something bad for my son to react this way. My own parents think a warning to my son would have been enough, but that is not true. My daughter-in-law said he has been doing this to her since after three months into their marriage. Do I feel guilt for doing it? No, I do not. I do feel sorry I didn't catch this earlier. I do feel like I have failed as a mother because if I did a good job my son would respect women. I just wanted to share this because no one from my family or community will ever talk to me if my son goes to prison. Nobody is with me except for my daughter. I know this will be a gossip for a long time, and people will not come forward to help me or my daughter-in-law. I will forever be the back ship. My husband is trans and I'm afraid he will never satisfy me like I want to. My husband, 21 male, and I, 21 female, have been together for three years and I love him so very much. He is trans, female to male, but I never cared about that and we've had a wonderful love-making life. He is like a god in bed and I always pass out after making love. I lost my identity to him when we first started dating. He made me feel safe and my first experience was amazing. But I'm worried. I've never made love with anyone else and I've never experienced love making with someone with a schlong. Granted he's made me finish more times than I can fathom without it. It's still something I feel that I am missing in my life. I find myself trying so hard to imagine his strap is real. Sometimes to the point that I can't even concentrate on the love making itself. I want to please him with my body but in our situation that's impossible unless I went down. I'm very insecure of my body and one thing I've always wanted is for someone to feel me and finish because of my body. He always tells me I feel amazing and that he loves my body but it feels like it'll never be 100% true. Satisfying man is a major kick of mine and so are cream pies. But I want to be with him forever so I'll never experience it. I love him so much and I want to be with him forever but I just wish he had one more thing. I wish we could have biological kids together. I wish we had pregnancy scares. I wish I could surprise him one day when I'm pregnant. But all of that just feels like a figment of my imagination. He is my best friend and my lover and I don't want to be with anyone else. I don't know what to do. I've told him about this and he's not sure what to say. I feel awful because I know that it affected his body dysphoria but I felt like I had to tell him. I don't want it to build resentment later in the relationship. I suggested a three-way but he doesn't like the idea of another man making love with me and he doesn't want to feel left out and knowing he won't be able to feel me like that guy would. I also suggested swinger couples and he's more open to that which I truly appreciate from him. I feel awful but I don't know what to do. I just had to share this. Thank you for reading. My wife is refusing to come back until the problem is fixed. She would be referring to my son. My wife has been gone for about a week now. She took our two kids to her parents' house and plans to remain there until she feels like our home is safe to live in. Last week, our daughter went into my oldest son's room and recovered a gun. I was not home at the time, but my wife told me that when she had went in my son's room to get my daughter, she had found her holding it. She was hysterical on the phone, and by the time I got home she was already one foot out the door with our son in one hand and a suitcase in the other. I don't even know where in the world my son got it in the first place, and he won't budge, I seriously don't know what the next step is here. For the past year, he is unwilling to cooperate with anything I'm trying to do to find out what is going on. My son is extremely distant and the crowd that he has been with really concerns me. He had a great group of friends, but one by one they started dropping until he was completely emerged with his friends now, constant law breaking, skipping school, selling you know what and all this other stuff that I can't even get through to him about. I have one final option. But I've been pushing off on doing this, but I truly believe that I've run out of ideas, for him to go to live with his mom in another country, but again, I don't want to do this because I don't want him to feel like I've just abandoned him, I've tried talking to him, psychiatrists, multiple therapists, etc., but absolutely nothing, it only gets worse as time goes by, I thought this would be his rock bottom, finding out that his little sister could have almost died due to his negligence, but no, he lies, denies, and then refuses to answer my questions, I have worked remotely this whole week to ensure he's in the house, but he refuses to do so, I just want to figure out what's going on but it feels like all my attempts at it are failing. Please, what I'm looking for are any more suggestions on how to get through to him. 
I traveled to a foreign country to get pregnant by a complete stranger with no strings attached, I consider it the best decision I ever made. Seven years ago, when I was 24 years old, I decided that I wanted to have a child while I was still, relatively, young and energetic, I had a college degree, made $90,000 a year as a marketing analyst, and had been investing in the stock market since high school, so I knew I could afford to take care of my kid. The problem was that I didn't really want to be with a guy, I tried the dating thing, but nothing clicked, and besides, I was always too busy to invest in a relationship, at the same time, I wanted a child, someone I would love forever and who would forever love me, and I didn't want to wait until my biological clock started ticking alarmingly. I considered going to a sperm bank, I could afford it, but I've always hated medical environments and thought it would be creepy to have a child with a faceless man, I thought about getting, naturally inseminated, by a guy I met online, but I didn't want to deal with child custody issues. Finally, I decided that since I'd already planned a three-week working vacation to a foreign country, I won't say which one for privacy reasons, I might as well try to kill two birds with one stone, long story short, after asking around and paying some people, I found this guy who was willing to sleep with me every night for three weeks, since this country has a low cost of living, he was willing to do the deed for a few hundred dollar, he spoke okay English and wore a white button-down shirt, so I think he was a college student who wanted some extra spending money. I didn't really expect it to work, but two weeks after I got back, I missed my period and discovered that I was pregnant, yay. The rest of my pregnancy went really well, my mom was a little shocked at first, but she moved in with me after she got used to the idea of becoming a grandma before the age of 50, my dad ditched my mom when I was a baby, so F him, I switched to working from home six months into my pregnancy and was even promoted a few months after I gave birth, having a marketable, pun intended, degree is a great investment, kids. My son is now six years old and the happiest little boy I know, he has a mother and a grandmother who love him to pieces and can give him a good life. When COVID hit and his school went remote, my mom was able to make sure he kept up with his learning. Support systems are so important, everyone. Sometimes, you shouldn't be afraid to take the road less traveled. I'm over 30, and I haven't met any guy that I want to date, much less settle down with, but I have a son who I'll love forever and who will forever love me. I'm even thinking of going back to that country to give him a sibling. Everyone still thinks that I got knocked up by accident, a youthful mistake while on vacation type of deal, only I know the truth. My son is not some unfortunate mistake, he's a deliberate miracle, so many of my female friends are hitting their 30s and scrambling to find a guy and or get pregnant, but I've coasting along, happy as a clam. Today I messed up by hiring a SX worker, so after a tough year working in remote area in the middle of nowhere, my friend and co-worker, 26 male, asked me, 25 male, to go with him on vacation for a week and I said heck yeah why not, why not had been my lifestyle for the last year, so we went to that country, visited multiple cities, and had a lot of fun. My friend in one of the places told me he knew some SX worker through Snapchat map and he already met her in the previous city. I noticed that he left the hotel one night and returned late. She will travel to meet him and she could bring a friend with her if I'm interested. So following my motto I said why not. The next day we met up with the girls and split up. I took the girl, two years older than me, to my room chatted a little bit and kissed then we left around sunset to the coast, rented a boat and continued chatting. That girl wasn't what I expected. She was smart, intelligent, beautiful, and we shared a lot of things, especially how we see things and think about people. She asked a lot of questions and so did I, but she asked a question that I didn't expect and didn't want to answer because it was too deep. She said you are a nice, kind person but something is wrong inside you, something dark in your heart, what's it? Can you talk about it? As a man in my environment the only thing you can do about your feelings is bottle it up and never talk about it, and I knew there's something wrong with me, and I was trying to fill that empty void in me for a long time especially the last few years with my job paying very well for me, because we were in a boat I couldn't run away from the answer, I tried revolving around the subject but without any success, until I saw a bathroom in the boat and I excused myself, after the boat we walked near the harbor, laughing and talking, eating some ice cream until we reached the hotel and sent her to take her bags to spend the night with me, my friend came to take his bags also, and gave me some protection. He's been a good friend as usual, winked and left. Shortly she brought her stuff, took a shower and we sat and talked. She brought up that question again and really insisted on getting some answers. Finally I gave up and started talking about my life, family and the struggles I have been through since the first memory I remember. The things I have never discussed with a human before has finally come out and loud. She understood, but couldn't say a lot because she didn't expect that much trauma. So I kissed her and we end up heading to the bed. And before I could start doing my job, I started having something like a panic attack. My heart was beating quickly, body shivering. I just rested my head on her chest and stopped for a couple of minutes. She tried to calm me down by massaging my back, whispering in my ear everything will be okay, and I couldn't lift my head up, just froze in that position, after a while managed to pull myself together, clean up, put up a robe, got back in the bed, kissed her, turned on the TV and slept, in the morning we ate breakfast, paid the girl, met up with my friend, bagged up and traveled back home, I didn't tell anyone yet, and usually I don't trust anyone to tell them anything especially my feelings and struggles, I'm more depressed at the moment than the usual, and I think I need to visit a psychologist which I knew I should do since the pandemic, but I didn't want to do it, and now I must give it a chance. I cheated on my boyfriend today and I have no regrets. My boyfriend, 31 male, and I, 25 female, have been together for a few months now, 
And it has been okay generally except that he is really possessive and insecure, he claims it's because he has been cheated on multiple times and I understand that, I make it a point to talk to him and reassure that he's the only man in my life. I got a new job, and there's this male colleague, 26 male, I have, we hang out together fairly regularly at work because we are the only ones in the same age group, now, of course, my boyfriend has been extremely jealous, I introduced them to ease his worries, and assured him we are just friends but it only got worse, to the point where my boyfriend would throw tantrums every day, crying if I stayed back at work overtime, refusing to talk or eat or sleep later, I was still patient. Now one thing he tends to do when he's upset is send long paragraphs, I have told him not to do that as when I'm at work, my phone is usually connected to the laptop that's being used for meetings and presentations and stuff, today, he called me at work, I told him I'll call him back as I'm heading in for a conference, he is oddly normal about things. I head in and connect my devices, open my pitch deck on my laptop, the deck I have spent weeks working on, and the first thing that pops up, a deep pic, right there, on the cover page, everyone is stunned, it is my boy.